Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions today. Glad you're here for a little time with us. Pastor Sutton here on this Thanksgiving morning to spend a little time in God's Word with you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm rearranging a little bit here. I was working on something else before we began here and um, wasn't quite ready to go. Didn't even clean my glasses yet. So it is Thanksgiving Day. That's about all I'm going to say about that. We had our Thanksgiving worship service here at St. Paul last evening. Fairly well attended, I thought. Um, and we woke up to a uh, cloudy and uh, not, well, yeah, overcast anyway, foggy, freezing fog. There's, there's warnings out for the roads uh, being uh, dangerously icy because of the near freezing temps and in the fog so good day to stay home although a lot of people will travel today um yeah so good morning and a happy thanksgiving to all of you let's see who's here with us this morning if i can get my mouse to go where i want it to go there's jerry good morning to you sir and a thanksgiving blessing to you kathy good morning john oh, pa hello and there's Bonnie. Yeah, see, foggy and 34. Mr. Whetstein and Karen, good morning. Something just does not feel right with the temps in the mid 80s. No. Well, I imagine it does help help arthritis. You bet. Debbie, good morning to you and Grant and Ann. Uh, yeah, Bonnie's Bonnie's watching the parade as well, or at least she had it on out there. I think she muted it. Mushtak, good evening to you, my friend. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Verna, good morning. Well, this is Fashion. Good morning to you. And how are you this day, Gail? A happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> yeah, and I'm stuffy and everything else. I was before you guys got here. I was I was working on on on. Well, it's a little hard to see here because I have such good lighting, but I'm working on on calendar stuff. It's time to get my new journal book ready and um, I do the calendars for one of the churches and I like to get all the holidays in on those. Uh, so that's uh, that's in process here as we're as I was waiting for you this morning. So well let's go ahead and get right down to the business at hand this morning. If you have the Lutheran service book page 295 daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, just to let you know also, I'm, I'm trying to remember to record these. And if I if I remember to record them, I'm now posting them back on my Facebook channel at noon. They come up there at noon, or my YouTube channel at noon. So if you happen to miss it, can't find it here, you can always check YouTube around noon. I'm not going to guarantee they'll be there every day, but I'm. I just started that last week, and my my goal is to make it a regular part of my pattern starting in in December. But um, I haven't done that quite yet. So let's go ahead and begin uh, here, page two ninety five, Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> I, am, I am a little stuffy today. Our psalm on this day, our psalm is Psalm 40, 41, verses 7 through 12, Psalm 41, verses 7 through 12. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you will delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. 
but you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Renee, good morning to you, and a happy Thanksgiving. <clears throat> um, uh, not 100% on my game here this morning either. But here, this. I've often wondered about this, but you have upheld me because of my integrity. The Lord, does the Lord uphold us because of our integrity? I don't think so. But notice that the next line, right, and, and Hebrew poetry, you got to pay attention to what's going on in, in both uh, halves of the line or both portions of the verse. You, you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. That integrity is steadfastness in the Lord, the faithfulness. And, and it's not because of the integrity that he did this, even though it says because of my integrity, but it is that God has upheld the man. You have upheld me, and I know you've upheld me because of my integrity. I wouldn't have the ability to believe or to have faith if it were not for you, for the one who is upholding him. And that's why we can go back one verse and say, this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will shout, not shout um, in triumph over me. Why? Because you, Lord, are gracious to me and raise me up. See? Again, to kind of go back up the psalm, and we find out that the reason that the man has integrity is because of the graciousness of God. And by that, he has been faithful. And in that faithfulness, God has set him in his presence forever. All right. Let's move on to our reading for today, which is Daniel chapter 4, 1 through 37. Oh, it's all of chapter 4, I think. <sighs> a lot of reading, guys. A lot of reading. <clears throat> Make sure we're well lubricated here. Jan Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Um, I want to see where we're going before I get there. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion endures from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at peace in my house and prospering in my palace. I saw a dream that made me afraid as I lay in bed. The fancies and, uh, and the visions of my head alarmed me. So I made a decree that all the wise men of Babylon should be brought before me, that they may make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers came in, and I told them the dream, but they could not make known to me its interpretation. At last Daniel came before me. He who was named Belshazzar after the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the, of the holy gods, and I told him the dream, saying, O Belshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and that no mystery is too difficult for you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I saw there, and their interpretation. The vision of my head, as I lay there in bed, were these. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> in the midst of it, the earth, and its height was... It was great. Well, hmm, hello there. <laughs> Told you I was stuffy. All right. So the king was saying, the tree grew 
and became strong, and its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in bed, and behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit, lest the beasts flee from under it and the bird, birds from its branches. But leave the stump of its roots on the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts of the grass of the earth. Let his mind be changed from a man's. Let a beast's mind be given to him. And let seven periods of time pass over him. The sentence is by the decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones, to the end that the living may know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will and sets over it the lowliest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, saw, and you, O Belshazzar, tell me the interpretation because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies. The tree you saw, which grew and became strong, so that its top reached to heaven, and in it was visible to the and it was visible to the end of the earth, the, whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant and in which was food for all, under which beasts of the field found shade, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. Your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven, and your dominion to the ends of the earth. And because the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven, saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it but leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. And let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. It is a decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven periods of time shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from that time that you know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be accepted to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power, is a royal residence, and for the glory of my majesty? While the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, 
O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling will shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men, and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the host of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth. None can stay his hand, or say to him, What have you done? At the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom my majesty and splendor returned to me, my counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are right, and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A lengthy reading. You can't argue with me. Oh, hey, Ashley, good morning. And a blessed Thanksgiving to you, dear. There's a lot here. And it is Thanksgiving. I don't want to take all day on this. Instead of being specific here, let me take a take a generality with this. The Lord is in control. God's in charge. It may not appear that way all the time. It may seem like sometimes we have options or opportunities or ways we can do things. But God is in charge and God is in control. Nebuchadnezzar had become a great king. His, his kingdom of Babylon had reached great lengths. I don't know if I would say it was the largest king in, kingdom in the world at that time, but it will uh, become part of what will be the greatest kingdom uh, that ever was in the world, uh, the greatest land, the largest empire, which will be the Roman Empire. But, um, but he attributes much of what he is and what he has and what he's done to himself. Um, and God is not done with Nebuchadnezzar or those who come after him, the kings who follow him. And so God shows Nebuchadnezzar what will happen to him. The watcher, of course, here is an angel. And he takes away from Nebuchadnezzar everything that he's been given. I mean, really, if you reduce a man to that of an animal... Um, you, you take his sensibilities, um, you drive him from his home, from his palace, um, leave him out eating the, what should I say, the, the, uh, the grass, living off of, literally living off of what's growing on the land. Uh, for seven years, um, you have taken everything from the man. And yet the Lord's, Lord saw to it, he, the iron band around the stump saw to it that he preserved what Nebuchadnezzar had. And when Nebuchadnezzar was able to lift his eyes to heaven and recognize the authority and dominion of God Most High, uh, then God restored him to what he had, gave him back, and even added to what he had. God is in control of everything. We are not automatons. Don't 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 read that into the, into what I am saying. 
Um, God gives us a free will, but that will is not truly free. It is bound. It is bound either to our Lord Jesus Christ through waters of baptism and word and sacrament, or it is bored, bound to the old wicked foe. And what happens in our life, the things that come upon us, good and bad, are either, well, are all from God, um, either, either allowed by his great grace that allows us to continue to live, even if we choose to be bound to the old wicked foe, that we might turn, as Nebuchadnezzar did, or the things that come from him that are, we see as being good. But we must learn to recognize that all things, on this day of Thanksgiving, national holiday, not a church holiday, um, this day that recognizes what the attitude and the, uh, the life of a Christian should be, that we need to give thanks to God for everything that we have and that we are, um, well, the good and the bad. It's difficult to, to, to see God working when we are suffering. Um, but that suffering, when we suffer for his sake, when we suffer in the name of Christ, when we, when we suffer with our eyes lifted to God and his Son, then that suffering brings about uh, stronger faith and endurance. And that endurance builds character, and that character leads uh, to Christ, to salvation, uh, to patience and endurance until the day the Lord comes. Because we have a promise that even in the things that we see as suffering, it is only for a time. And those who suffer in Christ's name suffer only for a time. 80 or 85 years by reason of strength, is what the psalmist says. And then we are with Christ our Lord. That's the promise we have. And even the ones who are wicked, who seem to be so much better off and never suffer, though in times of loneliness and darkness when nobody else is around, they suffer greatly. Their, suffer, their, their joys are found in this world only. And the world to come is an eternity of suffering. But for those in Christ, even though we mix, have the mixed joys of life in this world, joy and suffering, we know that our eternity is assured in Christ, where his peace keeps us and guards us beyond all understanding. And there we find joy eternal in Christ Jesus. Thank be God for that. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Maybe. Um, here, let us, oh, no, wrong page. Yep, here we go. Oh, I might as well turn the bookmark over there. <clears throat> so I'm ready tomorrow. Or tomorrow? Yeah, it's only Friday. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Alpha and Omega, in your suffering and death, you are making all things new. And from that tree, you brought your work of redemption to an end by declaring, it is finished. Be our beginning and our end, that our weeping now at your table here below may prepare us to feast at your heavenly banquet, where you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, and death will be no more. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's a, a point that I made in my message yesterday. I often make it on Thanksgiving is that oh, although Thanksgiving is not a church holiday, it's not it has always been recognized by the church. Um, but it's not a, a true church holiday or commemoration. And yet at the same time, it 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 sits at this interesting point. <clears throat> Speaking of God being in control of all things, this day of national Thanksgiving sits in, 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 between the last Sunday of the church year and the first Sunday of the church year. So we're in the week of the last Sunday where uh, I think, as I said last night, our, our, our readings and our thoughts and our devotions are uh, pointed at, at the second coming and final judgment of our Lord yet. Um, but 
before the promise of new life in Christ Jesus comes, before the coming of the baby in the manger. We're, we're, we're kind of in that, what, what's the word I'm looking for? This, this stasis, this no, no man's land, uh, uh, almost to Advent and not yet out of the old. In the, it's, it's a beautiful place uh, for us to have a day of thanksgiving as, as we stand in a place watching all things coming to an end in the scriptures and the final judgment and the joy of Christ coming, giving thanks for what uh, God does for us as we prepare to receive, as we prepare to watch and wait and be patient in receiving our Lord and Savior in the manger. It's, it's an amazing point in uh, that, that God chose to put that here. I mean, even the, even the pilgrims, the 29th of November was when they celebrated it uh, on that, in that week of no man's land in the scriptures. All right. Well, let's continue. I, oh, I got to look here a second. Is there a, um, you know, this little prayer book doesn't do I apologize I'm I'm digging in my little prayer book here but um it doesn't do a lot of prayers for it does for prayers for specific days um and for sickness and approach of death and uh for guidance and and for those in special needs but it doesn't do a lot with um special days of the years it doesn't um it's it's a very good prayer book but it doesn't should i say it doesn't recognize anything outside um the scriptures which makes it probably uh an even better prayer book for uh all, all those reasons this one was published in 2001 but it's a uh, it's it's a reworking of of 1957 and 1980 which i also have i think the I think this is the this is this is this is the one I'm using now. Looks looks like like this. Um, this is another one I have that's called um, Lutheran Book of Prayer, and I think this is the same book, but from oh wait now. Well, what, what, what this is 1970? No, it's not. It is a different prayer book. Oh look at this here. Uh, hmm. Uh, prayers for the church year. Uh, and prayers for the nation, Thanksgiving Day. See, under under the church year, it's got things like it's got things like Advent, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's, and so on. Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter, Ascension. But then under prayers for the nation, it's got Thanksgiving Day. So let me let me open this one to Thanksgiving Day, and we will use that for our, our uh, prayer for ourselves and others today. Um, well, come on, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna set aside this newer one and use this older one. Let us pray. Oh, wait, let us continue with the Apostles' Creed. I got into this stuff and I forgot the other. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this day of thanksgiving, Heavenly Father, from whom come all good and perfect gifts, from whom come mercies new each day, from whom come blessings beyond measure, 
accept our thanksgiving for protection in those who provide it, for daily bread in those who prepare it, for clothing in those who manufacture it, for family in those dear to us, for friends and for those associated with us, for jobs and those working with us, for social security and support programs. We confess we think too little about the fact that we deserve nothing, about the many who serve us, about the blessings of your spirit. We pray you, forgive our ingratitude, open our eyes to behold your goodness, fill our hearts with thankfulness, make us respond in appreciation, help us to serve in love. We thank you through Christ our Lord, your best gift to us. Amen. Our God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. We pray, Lord, that on this day of thanksgiving, you might uh, give us reason to be thankful for the comfort and the assurance that you give to those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, whether it be disease or age or illness or injury. We ask, Lord, that you continue to strengthen them in all their needs and keep them mindful of your assurance and promise. Especially this day, we pray for Peter, Pat, Lois, Ann, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Pam, and all those who are in need and call in that need upon your most holy name. And those who are in need but do not call, we ask, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit you might soften their hearts to hear your promise and to call upon you, that by your grace they may not only be saved but be assured of your promise. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get the reading off the screen there. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotions for this Thursday, November 24th, the day of Thanksgiving this year, to a close. God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Friday morning, for our daily devotions together. God's peace.